Hey, Miko. So nice to meet you. Hey, nice to meet you too. Good to see you. Good to see you too. I'm so excited to um, cook with you and to make the strawberry um, cobbler. I got this giant bowl of strawberries all ready to go. I know, me too. <laughs> <laughs> all right, you, get, you ready to lead the way? I'm ready to lead the way. Let's go. So I actually have a couple strawberries that I haven't cut yet or hold yet. So oh, yeah. um, what I like to do just as a tip is I like to hold all the strawberries at one time just okay. to make sure that, you know, we don't get uh, confused with hoeing and slicing. It's just more efficient to do one task at a time. <laughs> can, you show me, can you show me your hauler? Do you have like a hauler or do you just use a knife? I'm just using a knife. I'm just using a knife. That is I did it for the longest time and then la I think it was like a year or two ago. So I think either somebody gave this to me, but I don't know if you can see it. It's, oh, wow. Um, yeah, it, it's kind of like giant tweezers and they and it works kind of well. It just like snaps off the top. Wow, impressive. I need one of those. <laughs> I know, I think it's, yeah. <laughs> so can I do a quick slice? of the strawberries. Remember to protect your fingers and tuck them in. But I give a quick slice and what I'll do is I have my three pounds of strawberries, but I normally preserve three or four strawberries off to the side because I love to add some fresh strawberries onto the top since I'm cooking all the other ones. Oh, okay. So maybe I should do that. And should those be sliced too? Oh uh, yes, sliced as well. Slice the same way, just um, preserved to the side. Okay. Tell us about this recipe. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. I created this recipe for the Juneteenth virtual cookout, which I partnered with you guys on. I uh, helped organize 68 other Black bloggers in order to help amplify the holiday Juneteenth, in order to help amplify Black voices, to bring awareness to Juneteenth, and also just for community. Um, I kind of do something like this every year, whether it be Black History Month, this year Juneteenth, and it was just an amazing collaboration where we all got together and created recipes that are traditional to the Juneteenth holiday. Um, and one of the main things for Juneteenth or most common things about the food is a lot of the food is red. And that's in order to symbolize the perseverance of the enslaved in coming out of slavery because it's celebrating uh, the emancipation of the last slaves. And so a lot of the food is red. And so I was like, well, I have a red recipe and what's in season strawberries in June. So <laughs> that's how I, that's how the idea came up. Um, and uh, yeah, that's, that's it. <laughs> oh, great. Well, thank you so much for sharing it with us. Um, yeah. This, it calls for lots of strawberries, three pounds of strawberries, right? Three pounds and, of strawberries. Okay, so I'm just gonna show you how I sliced mine. They're a little mixed sizes and shapes. I hope that's okay. And that's okay, that's totally fine. I normally slice like an average size strawberry about four or five times, so about a quarter of an inch. You did it perfectly. And, and they're gonna be cooked down, so it doesn't matter if they're big, if they're larger or smaller. It'll provide more texture, so. Great, okay, good. All right, so then what happens next? All right, so let's start with the ingredients. So inside of your bowl of sliced strawberries, you're gonna add some dry ingredients. You're gonna add your granulated sugar. Okay, how much sugar is that? About three quarter cup. Three, okay. three quarter cup. Okay. <laughs> Am I saying it right? All of a sudden, everything sounds so weird. <laughs> okay, I've got that. And you're gonna add corn cornstarch, uh, about two tablespoons of cornstarch. Okay, great. So that's instead like some recipes call for, um, like sort of fruit cobbler calls will call for a flour that, to thicken, but this is a like another way of doing it. Exactly, is exactly. So the cornstarch is added, yes, to thicken uh, the reduction, um, and that will start to activate as we heat up or, uh, or start to cook down the strawberries a little bit. All right, here we go. Okay. All right. You got that? So yep. get some salt and some pepper. And right. I think most people are often surprised that I use salt and pepper in my like fruit cobblers and pies. But 
or salt is normally commonly used in order to help bring out the flavor, but pepper also is good at bringing out that natural sweetness and provides a little bit of a kick. I like that little in the back yeah. <laughs> when I take a bite. So one quarter teaspoon of both salt and pepper. All right. Now, I hope you're okay if I um, approximate the pepper. Just Absolutely. By... <laughs> yeah. I kind of tend to wing it a little bit. Um, <laughs> I always encourage people not to be held back in cooking by what they have or or limited ingredients. You know, work with what you got. For the most part, we all understand common substitutions. And so, you know, just yeah. make it a, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. <laughs> so I also have some fresh limes and you normally want about two tablespoons of lime juice. Okay. Every half of a lime is about a tablespoon in my opinion. So. Yeah, okay, I, I squeezed some in advance. So I'm just gonna measure two tablespoons. Okay, but that smells so good. All right, get my other one squeezed up. So are you are you in Dallas now? I am in Dallas, I am yeah. in Dallas. Yeah. Have you guys been, did you stay, stay there the whole time during quarantine or? For the most part, the last month and a half, I was uh, back at home visiting my mom in San Diego, um, <laughs> but I just got back yesterday. <laughs> So most of the time has been spent in Dallas, yeah. Let's go to the next ingredient. Get your okay. vanilla. Okay. How, how much should I um, add? About two teaspoons. Okay, great. Ooh. I'm gonna wing this one. <laughs> nice. That It smells so good. They like just with the, between like the strawberries, the vanilla, the lime, it's all sort of wafting up. It's really great. Yeah, and right now strawberries are in peak season. So, you know, one of the identifiers for great strawberries is that they are very fragrant. And so if you're smelling it, then you got some good strawberries. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now, do you have any mint over there? I do. Okay, so yeah. okay. You already, did you already cut yours up? I didn't, I'll chop it real quick. Okay, go ahead and chop up your mint. You wanted like 10 sprigs. Okay, oh, 10 sprigs, okay, yep. That's, I have the, the, yeah, the leaves of about 10 sprigs here. Yeah, and I kind of julienne mine so they're nice and fine and they can spread throughout the, throughout um, the whole strawberry mixture, so. Okay, I'm doing the best, <laughs> doing my best to julienne. But it, might be, it might be more of a like, sort of julienne chop. Great. All right, and just throw those in. Okay. To your strawberry mixture and then start to mix and grab a spoon and start okay. mixing it all up. Okay, great. You want to make sure that all of the cornstarch and sugar uh, starts to um, not melt down, but you know what I mean. <laughs> it's, like, um, it's kind of almost not a paste, but you know, um, it's sort yeah. of a, a sauce. It actually already feels like it's Add, add any, add, like it, 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 um, it's adding some viscosity to the juices already. Yeah, it does it pretty quickly actually. So once it's all dissolved, then we're gonna prep our uh, skillet. Do you have a cast iron skillet or a regular skillet? How does this look? So I, I use a, I did, I have another, well actually I use, this is an enameled cast iron. I used a cast iron one um, when I made it before. Um, and it, it it was just a little bit too small, so I was gonna use this one. Is that all right? Oh, yeah, yeah, you definitely want to get, what is this, like a 10 to 12 inch size cast iron okay. skillet? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Great. Um, So let's get our cast iron prepped. We're going to okay. uh, get some, you can use butter or you can use a cooking spray and spray it so that you get it all around the edges. Okay, I'm gonna use some butter. I was also just gonna say that, you know, if you are not in peak strawberry season, like we are fortunate to be in, you can also use frozen strawberries. Often those frozen strawberries are, are picked in peak season and frozen. And so they are so very delicious. You just want to thaw them out, try to get out any excess moisture, um, but you can use those just the same. It's like, I feel like frozen foods kind of get a, you know, sort of have a bad reputation, but in fact, they're often, Picked, like like things are picked right like in the in the field and then very quickly for like taken to a facility to be frozen so they're in very good like very good shape when they get frozen so it's actually you know often good quality 
I think that's the case really for all frozen vegetables. I would def certainly recommend frozen vegetables over cans. Frozen vegetables, fruits. Yeah. Any produce Definitely. over cans, so. All right, I've got my thing buttered. Oh, that looks nice and moisturized. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so turn on your skillet heat to medium high. All right, oops, so I've got this heating. It's on medium high. Okay, so now that we have our skillet nice and prepared, you can actually see this, I don't know if you guys can see the seam starting to come up from mine, but it's it's warm. We're gonna go ahead and add in the strawberries. Okay, so just, great. Uh, carefully pour them in to the pan. You hear that sizzle, woo! Yeah, I gotta, I don't drop them too hard because you don't want any splash or residual juices to pop up at you, so be very, very careful. Okay, all right. Okay. All right, stir it around just to even it out a bit and then just let it cook for five minutes. You might have to come back, you know, at the midpoint just to give it another stir, but it should cook down. It's pretty independent from this point okay. on. Okay. Great. All right. So now that that's cooking, or while that's cooking, we can actually get started on the cornbread topping. Oh, okay, excellent. Okay, I'm gonna come back. I'm gonna wheel my. <laughs> <laughs> my strawberries are bubbling nicely. Yes, mine's are too, and they're starting to release all the good smells right now. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So normally at this point, I have two bowls. I'll mix my dry ingredients for the cornbread and the wet ingredients, and then I'll blend them together. Oh, okay, great. I'm just gonna get a second bowl out. Okay, I'm ready. While I grab my extra bowl, I'll just remind everybody that our oven is preheating at 400 degrees right now. So it's, it's ready for us to pop in. And actually a really good tip I'll show you guys. Normally I like to have a sheet pan in there like this especially when working with skillets because then I don't have to grab the hot skillet. This makes it easier to pull out. All right. Oh, you, you're, you're finding one? Good. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. All right. All right. So let's start off with our flour. We have some all-purpose flour, about a cup of all-purpose flour. Uh-oh. Oops. Uh-oh. <laughs> Sorry, I'm having, I'm having some problems here. Um, <laughs> This is what real life cooking is like, so the real idea of what to expect. As long as it turns out something delicious, it was all worth it. Exactly. <laughs> okay. Whew. Okay, I've got my, okay, I've got the flour measured. So we have some cornmeal over there. Yep. How much? Got about a half a cup of cornmeal. Okay. Okay. All right, so do you have some confectioned or powdered sugar? Got that. Okay, so a half a cup of powdered sugar. Okay. And then a half a cup of granulated sugar. Now some people might think like, why powdered sugar and granulated sugar? <laughs> I was gonna ask you that. Thank you for <laughs> I, I, I figure it will be a common question. So typically, um, when making cornbread, it's a more like a uh, kind of granule, like drier texture. And I wanted this to be a kind of moisture, denser texture. Also okay. wanted it to be sweet. Like I like sweet cornbread. And, and since this is a dessert, I wanted yeah. it to be, you know, a sweet cornbread. So okay. the powdered sugar uh, lets in less air than granulated sugar and creates oh. a, a, a moistness, a, like a fluffy moistness for the cornbread. So. That's why we're using powdered sugar to kind of blend in with the granulated sugar. Got it. I never knew that. Thank you. And then we have some baking powder. Okay. How, how much of that? Uh, oh, one and a half teaspoons, right? One and a half teaspoons. <laughs> <laughs> I love having, having our like, uh, you know, magician behind the curtain <laughs> guiding us along. It's so nice. <laughs> Oh, and also salt. I actually had blended my baking powder and my salt together. Three okay, quarters great. of a teaspoon of salt. <laughs> okay, great. Got that. All right. And I'll normally take a whisk to kind of get things nice and blended together. So I'll use a whisk to mix all of the dry ingredients together. Okay, great. I'm just going to quick check on my strawberries. 
Okay, mine are bubbling like very actively. Is that what you want? Yeah, so if they're bubbling really actively, and I think it's been about five minutes, so we can actually turn those down. Okay. Or turn, turn them off, off at this point. Like off or? Yeah, turn it off. Go ahead and turn okay. them off. They're ready to go. They're just waiting on the cornbread topping. Okay, great. They look amazing. <laughs> I hope they smell amazing too. They smell amazing too, yes. <laughs> all right, so are your, are your dry ingredients all prepped? Oh yeah. Oh, that looks good. Perfect. So now let's move to the wet ingredients. Okay. So get a smaller bowl. Yeah. And we have a cup of buttermilk. Everything okay. better with buttermilk. Yeah. Or butter, period. <laughs> <laughs> so pour in your buttermilk. And I've been having that kind of sitting at room temperature. Um, also, I have some melted butter. Yeah. Okay. okay. And that's been sitting exactly at room more. temperature as well. <laughs> well <laughs> Cheers. Um, Cheers. <laughs> okay. So go ahead and mix in your butter to your buttermilk. Okay. You want to whisk that, get that nice and combined. And super okay. simple, you're going to pour that into your dry ingredients. So sometimes what I like to do is create like a little well in the middle mm -hmm. so that it combines well, combines well, create a well just so that it combines well. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then just, okay. you just whisk it in? Yeah, I just whisk it in. Yeah. Okay, great. Oh yeah. So when I made this before, I, um, at first I was worried that this was going to be like, because it felt like it was sort of a loose batter uh -huh. and I would, and, uh, but then it creates such a nice light, uh, topping. Yes. And yeah, I was just wondering if that was something you played around with. Um, that was the whole purpose of bringing in the confectioner sugar or the powdered sugar versus okay. the okay. other. So yes, exactly. That is what I played around with. Good. I'm happy you caught that. <laughs> I was just going to ask you a question. Do you like? Is there any concern with like over mixing? Um, not for this. No, not for this. No. So just kind of do it until it's smooth and there are no lumps. Exactly. Okay. Nice and smooth. Okay. So I think I'm gonna. So um. I think I'm going to bring over, should I bring my strawberry can over here to Yeah, so, yeah, let, bring it over here so I can check it out. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you can see. Can you see? Oh, yes, I can see. Oh, great. <laughs> Yours are so juicy. Yeah, they're really, yeah, they are really juicy. Um, is that okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll continue to thicken as in the oven. Okay, great. Awesome. So I'm going to just put them here. All right, so we've got our strawberries. We've got our cornbread topping, right? Yeah. All right. So I, I, I normally use a big spoon at this point because I'm going to just like dollop on the cornbread and I don't spread it out because for me, I love seeing the strawberry juices like peek through the crust, oh, but okay. you can do either way. It's up to you. Okay. All right. Let me go get my big spoon. Okay. So kind of like that right there. Perfect. Okay. And just like plop it on the top. Just like literally just plop it. Yeah, and I just do like little plops around, kind of like little biscuit type plops. Yeah. <laughs> this is the worst description. But yeah, <laughs> just, I create some space in between, like one in the center, maybe five dollops around. Okay. Well <laughs> I um mine have I did like four equal dollops and now I get to I have to do like mini dollops around those. That, that happens to me too. You just never know. So I'm I'm with you. I'm doing my mini, mini dollops now, so you're not okay. <laughs> How did yours look so far? Well you can see. Ooh, can you see it? Ooh, sort of? Yes! Yes! We're twins! <laughs> oh my <laughs> <laughs> Mine came rushing out. I'm so excited to see you. Yes, we're twins. Okay. All right, so your oven's preheated, 400 yep. degrees. You've got your, your, your sheet pan in there yep. to uh, help uh, bring it out when it's done. And go ahead and plop this skillet on top of the sheet pan and put it, you know, in the middle of yep. the oven. Got it. Okay. All right. Get and then after that, there's one more really important step. Oh, okay. All right. Woo. Ready for the last? Okay, so it's time to take a dance break. <laughs> <laughs> That's gonna give the cake or the or the cobbler some good juju and cook up real nice.
nice and wonder and deliciously. So, um, okay. <laughs> All right. All right. So our strawberry cornbread skillet cobbler is in the oven. Um, but we went ahead and did a little TV magic, right? So we have yeah. already made strawberry uh, cobblers or gosh, the name is like a tongue twister, strawberry cornbread skillet cobbler. <laughs> So I'm going to bring mine out and put it right here. Oh my gosh. I just, I, I, I know I'm not supposed to bring this up to the top, but I, you just, see. Can, you, can you see a little bit of that? I don't want to spill like I did last time because that means a burn. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! <Okay>. Beautiful! <laughs> <laughs> I've, got, I've got my utensils. All right, perfect. I am gonna get my spoon and we're going to dig in. I'm going to serve mine with ice cream and some fresh strawberries. What are you gonna serve yours with? I'm gonna serve mine with some fresh heavy cream that you know we've had. It's actually it's this really nice heavy cream from Ronnie Brook um, and it actually as it ages it thickens a bit almost like a creme fraiche. It doesn't you know it's perfectly good. It smells amazing but it's it's sort of like <laughs> It's, um, if only, if only. Right, if only. Yeah. Whoever if, comes up with that idea is going to yeah. get rich. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm just going to pour the heavy cream over top because I feel like it's kind of a nice. I love that idea. I think you can use anything creamy to go with this to offset the tartness and the sweetness of the strawberry. So it could be ice cream. It could be heavy cream like you're using. It could be whipped cream. All yeah. are good um, accompaniment for yeah. this dessert. So now you dig in and you just make sure you get some fresh or some of the uh, strawberries and get some of the good cornbread topping. So yeah, kind of break into the crust a bit. Normally yeah. I'll actually try to get a little strawberry, extra strawberries down on my face first. And the, the juices have like thickened nicely. They're really, yes. it's almost, um, it's like kind of like a, like a loose preserve almost. Exactly, yeah. And I put a little bit of the cornbread right on top of the strawberries. Oh yeah, I'm gonna get a little bit more cornbread. Whee! That looks so good. Okay, oh yeah, great. You're doing your ice cream? Yep. I'm just gonna pour it around the edges. Oh, well, whoops. <laughs> well, so much for that um, plan. It's now <laughs> kind of everywhere, but it'll be delicious. Hey, yeah. oh, I like your like bowl too. Your bowl is very pretty. Thank you. Okay, can I dig in? <laughs> Hold on, let me catch up with you. <laughs> let's go, let's go. And actually, I'm gonna bring my holy husband on so he can taste oh, it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He has time tasting it. We'd love to meet him. Hi. Hi. Hi, I'm Amanda. Hey, Chef Kenneth. <laughs> coming on camera, so you know. Here's my man, ladies. Isn't it tender? See? This is, yeah, it's really yummy. What's the appropriate bite size for all the camera? <laughs> That's why you don't burn yourself. It did just come out the oven. It's why I, mine is actually, has cooled. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's fantastic at room temperature, too. Oh, yay! So all temperatures. Tastes okay. really good. <laughs> you got a nice sweet strawberry. Yeah. yeah. The tanginess. Mm -hmm. That's with the uh, tenderness of the cornbread and that ice cream. And that ice cream just melts right into it so mm -hmm. beautifully. It's it delicious. It cools off her. You get off camera. Yeah. You know. It's really good. <laughs> so good. Nico, thank you so much. My I really appreciate pleasure. you. Um, coming and hanging out with us, but also and just showing you this great recipe. I really love it. I'm so <laughs> happy I got to share it with you guys. I'm so happy that I got to share Juneteenth with all of your audience. And I'm looking forward to doing more recipes with you guys. Oh, good. We can't wait. Good. So I hope to see you soon. Yes, definitely. <laughs> all right. Have a good rest of your day. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>